So today we'll be tackling the project of locks. And if you're like me, when you received your RV, you probably got several different keys. And unfortunately, only one of these keys is truly unique, your door key, depending on what brand of RV you have. The most common lock in the whole world is the CH751. And basically every single other RV owner out there has one of these keys because the industry just for their tumbler locks pretty much only uses this key unless you buy a, a higher end camper. And then if you have the slam style down here, a lot of them are the Southco R001 locks, which again, anybody that has a fifth wheel and has this type of slam latch, they're gonna also have the same key. So as I'm getting closer to storage season, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and order the uh, slam latches and the tumbler locks so that I could get this unit keyed all to one key. Um, a couple advantages is it's simpler, and then two, it actually gives a little bit of security into these areas. Now, of course, if someone really wanted into your camper, they could drill through this, it's just like your house. If somebody really wanted into it, they could get into it. But if you're putting a lot of money into lithium batteries or other nice accessories in here, you might want to think about putting a little bit better lock so that they say, mm, not worth it and move on to something else. So to start with, we'll be doing the easier one, the tumbler locks. These are pretty much just unscrew the existing one, screw the existing one in, and then we'll move on to the slam latches, which will require drilling out a few rivets. Not too challenging, but it'll require a little bit of work. The key point on when you get the tumbler locks is measuring, because depending on if you're doing your basement door or your kitchen door, any of those, these lock lengths are the most important thing. And they're measured from the tumbler face out to where the, the lock mechanism out here. So in my particular unit, I needed a 7 8 inch long one and a 1 and 3 8 inch long one. But your unit, that length could vary. And the only way to really know is to actually take your existing tumbler lock completely out of the door. So we'll move around the door and get started. So here's our new lock that we've ordered from RV Locks and More. They didn't, they're not sponsoring me. I actually couldn't even find a discount code or anything from their site. Nice thing about theirs is you can specify what your door key is and they'll pre-key the lock for you to your door key. So much nicer filling lock than originally came with it. It's gonna pop right into the hole there. And when we actually give you some better accessories, like they actually give you a little gasket to put around there that my original one didn't come with. And then they've got several other washers and the screws to replace it. So we can put on the little gasket there. We can put on the little bite washer. And the bug is biting me on the back of my arm while I'm trying to do this. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put, you don't wanna put a ton of torque on these because again, these doors are not super robust, but just enough to kind of keep it from moving on you. That feels good. And then make sure you know what your lock versus unlock position is. This is going to be my unlock position so that when I turn this, it goes back down to latch the door in place, just like that. Always want to do a little check on that before you spend time screwing this last screw in. That one I give a little more torque to. And then, Simple as that, we've now keyed this lock right here to be to this key. So now we've got one more of the tumbler style locks to go, and then we'll switch over to the slam latches. So this is the new tumbler lock here. This is where I had to use the one and three eighths. Uh, it is a, just a hair thicker in the flat portion right there. So kind of pressing it through the thumb lift and through the door just required a little bit of extra force, but it didn't require anything too aggressive. And then I'm gonna use the watertight gasket that they gave right there. And then also this extra washer to get the whole assembly on there. And we'll use just a little bit here. Again, nothing too crazy. You don't want to bend the metal or break the styrofoam or anything like that that's on the inside of here. That looks pretty good there. And we will stick our key in to make sure that we understand which way this is going to turn for when we want to lock it. And line it up. Like 
that where it bends down. And we lock it. Test it out. There we go. So I think one of the things that would make most people nervous about replacing these slam latches is the fact that these are held in by rivets. So these rivets are really no big deal just to very gently drill through. And then some people worry about, well, what do I put into those rivet holes? And most people on the forums actually end up reusing these four screws because you get an additional set of screws. And they just drill these holes wide enough so that these screws kind of self-tap into them. Uh, one thing a lot of people complain about online too is that these backing plates aren't even metal. They're plastic, actually. Um, whereas the new kit comes with a nice metal blacking plate that goes into there. Uh, maybe early on these were sold separately, but I didn't have to do anything special from the uh, RV Locks and More site. It just came immediately with these plates. I, I didn't have to select any options or anything. So maybe that's something that was in the past, but mine came with them to replace this entire plate over right here. So this is the new backing plate, and again, it's much better than being metal. And where I only took just the heads of the rivets off, I still have these two little stands, and they line up perfectly on one side. But on the other side, they were just a little bit off, and I wouldn't have been able to actually get them through the holes. So then I just used my drill just to take them down just enough that those stocks were gone right there. Just taking my time, and it's aluminum. It comes off real easy. And then these are the screws that actually were originally holding it in there. And you can see that they'll be able to nicely self-tap into those holes and create a real strong hold into there. So now I've got the entire lock reinstalled. I was able to use, just like I read on the forums, all four of the original screws that are kind of more of a tapping screw to set into the rivet holes and then screw this base plate on. Uh, one thing that I did have to do is these holes versus these holes lineup wasn't quite perfect. So I actually widened up the holes that these screws went through in this metal plate just a little bit to get a better lineup on them. Um, obviously you can see I didn't make them too big because you can't see any slaughtering or anything behind the screw heads. But it went on very easy and having a metal backing plate against here is a lot stronger of a lock against there. And uh, you can see the appearance is nearly identical to what the original one was on the unit. That's one I haven't replaced yet. So I'm just going to do the other two and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So overall this is a pretty easy job. It was taking me about 15 minutes per side including drilling these rivets out. Don't let that intimidate you. They're just real soft aluminum. A small drill bit can take them out and then reusing the four screws that held the original slam latch in place. Uh, they fit nicely into there. Give it a real nice look. Going from this you know flimsy plastic right here backer to a nice metal backer is a real upgrade. And the best part is going to be when I go to my key ring here and I remove two keys that everyone else in the world has and I'm left with only one key that only a few campers have that happen to match the same global key as me. Again, I ordered these off of RV Locks and More. There might be a couple other sites that have them as well. I was able to order them pre-keyed for what I wanted. Uh, couldn't find any discount codes or anything like that and they didn't give me any discount anyway. But uh, it was an easy to do project and if you're going to have, let's be honest, thousands of dollars worth of gear and grills and batteries and who knows what else in the basements and other compartments of your camper, you might want to think about spending just a little bit of money and upgrading your locks. So thanks for watching. Leave me some comments. Thank you very much.